Living Beautiful Soul family. I'm Coach Susie and welcome to the Beyond Abuse podcast. I have Fonda White Jr. with me today. Uh, Fonda White is a motivational speaker. He, he is the CEO and owner of uh, Rise to Strive. Um, and he's speaking about the importance of self-care for men, especially men who experience mental barriers, because we, we understand that a lot of men go into hiding um, regarding mental barriers. And we want to let men know that it's, it's okay. It's okay to be you. It's okay to admit that you don't have it all together because no one is expecting you to have it all together. But in the same token, you got to be able to take care of yourself, right? So without further ado, thank you, Fonda, for agreeing to be here with me today. It's always a pleasure for you to join me um, on these conversations and to provide your expertise. And if I left out anything, you know, any of your accolades or anything like that, go ahead and share that with us before we get started. And then we'll jump right into it. So go ahead. Okay, yeah, um, I'm actually, it's funny you say that because I'm actually starting uh, this new thing. It's called the, <clears throat> I think I believe I mentioned it to you before, but it's called the Mind Me Project, M-I-N-D Project. And it uh, stands for My Illness Never Defines Me. Oh, so yeah. so I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to work on that more and more, kind of implement that with uh, everything I'm doing. So, but other than that, you did a great job though. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, yes, because I think that a lot of us, in including me, for, for many years, and you probably have too, for many years, we, I allowed that, that, that mental barrier to define me, to kind of right. uh, hide who you are because of fear of judgment. But it, mental, our mental barriers are only one little piece of the beautiful puzzle that we are. We're this huge puzzle that has right. all these right. different pieces and yeah. mental health is just a small portion of that. And we, we allow that little one little piece to be the whole puzzle. And that's not true, right? Right. Yeah, that's, that's exactly, exactly right. What I learned yesterday is funny. Um, me having schizoaffect disorder, which is schizophrenia and bipolar together. Mm -hmm. um, I realized that uh, before who I was, you know, we always put these these expectations on ourselves or, or expectations on people, you know, like we, we kind of put them at a high standard and put, plus we put ourselves at a high standard. But what I learned with <clears throat> my disorder is that it's okay to have, you know, the mental barriers or the mental illness or mental disorder I have, but that doesn't mean like it's, it, it is who I am at, at the core, you know what I mean? So yeah, I, I just kind of, kind of learned that process, you know, just ex like I've been accepting it but just more so accepting my own illness and what I can and cannot do with it, you know, but at the same time, like, no, it, it doesn't define who Fonda White is. <laughs> right, absolutely. It, it doesn't define who you are at all. It's a part of, it's something that happened in your life, you know, like it's, it's something that was, was a result of whatever it is that you experienced in life. Yeah. And that's what it is, you know, and I, somebody told me the other day that they don't even call it a disorder or right. Um, illness they call it a condition right yep, yep. Condition. you know like it doesn't make us you know it, it doesn't define us and I think so many of us define allow it to define us and that's why we, right. we stop we hesitate we don't live the life that we're truly meant to live because we think oh my goodness here I am again having another episode or you know whatever it is and it's you have to really be compassionate with yourself and know that that's just like you said, it's only a little small portion. It's, it's, yep. It doesn't define you, you know, and you got to be okay with that. So as someone who experiences um, your condition, uh, condition, tell us how, how you take day by day or what does a routine look like for you as a person with a mental condition? Right. You know, and, and, having the mental condition, it, there are days where it's harder and then there's days where it's, it's okay, you know? So just want to put that out there. It's okay to have those days. Mm -hmm. But um, for my routine, <clears throat> I usually just kind of kind of look within. I always get up in the morning and say uh, a prayer and do my affirmations or whatnot um, to keep myself centered, you know? 
And, you know, then I go, you know, into what I'm doing for the day, but I'm always reminding myself each and every day that, you know, uh, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, like I mentioned before, you know, and, you know, things like my hobbies, like music is one of my hobbies and things that keep me kind of uh, created, you know, like, or creative, excuse me, because I'm, I'm a creative type, you know, I love making fit videos and sometimes I put a funny video out or some type of music or whatnot, but just trying to find that, um, I guess that, what do you call it, like that one that thing that your gift, that one thing that you're gifted with that God has given you, you know, it's like embrace it. And I, I came to figure out that I'm a creative type, you know, and just being around creativity kind of keeps me centered and grounded in my routine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I absolutely agree <clears throat> with that. And, um, and I think that the more that you create, the more gifts that you uncover, because like right. you said, you you know, music, music is something that you love, but then you got, you know, the, the mind me, you know, right. that's a gift too. That's a yeah. gift too. you sharing your story and you coming up, like being creative is in a, in a you know, inventing things. You're an innovator, right. you know, right. once you actually tap into that and create yourself this, this routine, because yes, we have as people who experience mental barriers, and, and, and depression or whatever it is you may go through, you have to have that, you have to have that routine. Right. And you gotta kind of stick to it because when you don't stick to it, you know that it's like, oh, I see, like, I didn't, I didn't do what I was supposed to do this morning. Right, it throws you all off. <laughs> it's like, uh -uh, and I cannot forgo that. And that's very important. And that is a part of self-care. Would you agree or not agree? Oh, I totally agree. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that's definitely mm -hmm. self-care for you. And you got to gotta make yourself a priority, right? Right, yes, number gotta, one priority. Yeah, you got you to gotta make sure that you're sticking to that schedule, sticking to that routine. And do you find that when you actually stick to your routines, you, you have more ideas, you have more creativity? Yes, I do, actually. It's funny you say that because I know <clears throat> sometimes when I get off track, like, and you know, having my mind, it can be everywhere, just everywhere with ideas and everywhere. And I, I tell my girlfriend all the time that it's like, man, I got this idea. And she's like, okay, well, write it down or, you know, think about it. But um, when I am on my track to with what I'm doing and, and especially keeping the, the mission in, in front, you know, uh, I think we talked about it before, but my mission is always to create hope back into people's lives in the mental health community. That's my mission. So I try to keep that in the front of my mind and so if I do ever get off track a little bit, I, I try to steer back, you know, into my mission, you know, so remembering the mission is a big part. Right. And I think it's very <laughs> important for you to have that support system. Um, yes. I, don't, I don't know Joy, but she's been, you know, an amazing person to like connect with so far. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, you need that support system, especially when, and you need somebody who understands understands yes and yes it does definitely so important to know <clears throat> that. yeah sometimes i have all these these thoughts and i think that's important for you to write them down you know so that you can keep a track of them mm -hmm. but um tell us about like you know what else are you doing as far as like your music i know you got the mind me but what are some other things that you are doing to keep hope alive in the mental um the mental illness community if you if you would yeah um like i said i got the mind me project i'm still working on some ideas for that um i'm still thinking I, i've wrote it but or i've written it but i'm still kind of coming up with my book idea um my music is i'm, I'm still kind of going back and forth with as far as like if i actually want to pursue it or just kind of do it for my own therapy myself but um also, with in Rise and Strive, like I said, one day I want that to be a, a, a nonprofit organization for mental health community. So I have a lot of things going on, um, but I'm just trying to, like, like Joy always tells me, kind of focus on one, you know. And, and what I want to say is about self care, and, and, and especially for men, you know, it's like when you have, like we just talked about, when you have that support system or that support group around you. You know, like my mother and, and my sister and, and my girlfriend, Joy, and it's like they kind of keep you kind of balanced in, in a sense, you know, and it's like, I think it's very important, not only for yourself, like, yes, self-love and self-care is important, but having that group around you, people, that energy around you to keep you, you know, 
sane in a sense. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and also totally agree with that uh, and especially men like I said before like I think a lot of men feel that they need to you know present this one front because right. they're afraid that uh, somebody won't understand that but right. there is someone out there that will love you just as you are but the yes. key is being honest and upfront yeah. about your your struggles or your conditions. And I think a lot of men try to hide from that. So if you were to, to speak to men, what is it that you would encourage them um, if they are struggling with a mental barrier? What, what is some, something that you would say to encourage them or to give them hope right. in that situation? Right. I would say the first thing is, is, is vulnerability. You know, it's like, it's okay to open up. It's okay. There's, that doesn't make you less of a man or, you know, not manly in a sense. It's okay to open up, you know. Um, and what I'm learning, especially with this, the, the beautiful relationship I'm in with Joy is like, you know, with when we talk and we discuss things, you know, it's, it's definitely important for that person. It doesn't even have to be a girlfriend or anything, just a friend or anything to want to understand your mental barrier. And that's the thing that um, me and Joy are learning as well together, you know, more on schizoaffect disorder. Like she'll watch videos and kind of read about it just to understand me and, and help our relationship better, you know? So, you know, I would also tell the men, you know, to um, find something. I always tell people to find something that they love to do and express it. You know, it doesn't have to be music or writing. It could be building cars or anything like that. Find something to do, keep your hands busy, you know, keep it moving. And um, yeah, just, just be vulnerable and, find something that you love to do and, and open up, you know, it's, it's important. It's very important. Yes, I absolutely agree. Do you think that more men struggle with that concept of being perfect? I do. And, and I, and I, I struggle myself, you know, like sometimes I think about like, you know, the moneymaker or the protector, the, the guy that has to be, you know, this and <clears throat> yeah, I, I definitely do think we, it's embedded in us, you know, as, as kids growing up, you know, and things. Um, I didn't necessarily grow up as much with my father, but um, but just when my uncles and everything, when I was around, it's like, you know, you have to be that that tough guy, you know? And I think it's just embedded us to, to do that. But like I said, just, it's okay to let down the sword a little bit, you know, and, and open up, you know, because that's the only way, you know, that's the only way you can grow. You know, that's the only way you can grow is to let go, so. Oh, that's good. I like that. Let go. Because I think too, that so many men, just like you said, they, they feel that they have to be in control and they feel that they have to be the, the protector and the provider. Well, I, I think that we, we, we have to be able to be that together. You know, right. like as a man, you deserve it just as much as she does, you know, mm -hmm. but, but then that goes back to, um, and, and not, just like you said before, not just a romantic relationship, in your friendships as well. You got to right. put that guard down. You you got to be okay. And I, and I get it. A lot of us, most of us have been hurt in the past. Yeah. But like you said, you got to let it go because there are people out there that no matter what you go through, no matter your struggles, there's some people out there that will support you yeah. and, and see you <clears throat> understand you. You know, For but... Sure. They can't do that without you expressing your needs, your vulnerabilities. And I think a lot of men have trouble with asking yeah. for help. Would you? Oh agree? man, yes, I definitely agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. what would you what would you say to those men that um, are very prideful? I think and mm -hmm. don't want to don't want to ask for the help. What 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 would you what would you say to them? Well, I know I've. I've been one of those men so uh, <laughs> for me it was more like I would I would do things like like show my action to try to get help you know like things like that you know like kind of look at somebody like I need help but I wouldn't say it mm. but I think that if we can just start off small in increments of just like asking just for uh, some advice or some some more clarity or something like that just like I said in the, in the beginning, just vulnerability and just kind of let it ease and let it go a little bit, you know, because we, we as men, you know, <laughs> we have to, there, there are certain times we have to be, you know, the, the, the guy, mm -hmm. but, um, 
you know, once you have somebody that, and, and like I said, friend or romantic partnership or whatever, once you have somebody you can trust, you know, that's a big thing. It's like find somebody you can trust yeah. to talk to and um, open up, you know, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So how did, how did you, how did you get to that state of being more vulnerable and sharing your emotions and sharing your struggles? For me, it was, it was when I, I'm, I'm a, type of person I don't like to let people down or I don't like to make people feel bad mm -hmm. and honestly when I saw my my mom and sister and in in positions where they're crying you know and they were just like they didn't know what to do with with me when I was going through my dark times that that just morally helped you know made me feel a certain way and so I was like man I need to stop trying to portray this you know I played football college football and minor professional league football and I was like, I need to stop trying to portray this, this guy with the armor because I'm hurting people, you know? And so I, I just let piece by piece, it was like, I would let them know little things here and there. And then um, eventually now, now I can't stop talking about it. <laughs> 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 <You know? laughs> so, that's a yeah. good thing though. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I agree. Once you get to that point of um, stripping down that armor, and, 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 and I think a, a lot of men struggle with that is that, you know, because like you said, they, they are, they feel that they are supposed to be this, this manly man, you know, and, and I love the fact that you share because you have been, you know, uh, because people will look at you like, oh, he's been, you know, he's a football player. He, he does all this stuff. So I think it's very important because a lot of those men struggle, you know, yeah. because they're, they're expected to be this 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 statue this person who who does not have any emotions and I think more men need to see that that you have you have the feminine in you too it's it's about balancing that oh, and, yeah. and knowing that it's okay to share because I don't know about you or where you come from but I know in in our culture it's not it's frowned upon it's yep. for men to share their yep. emotions because exactly. they're seen as weak or, you know, not manly. And that's the opposite. I feel, I right. feel that yeah. being able to, especially a man, when he's able to be vulnerable and open and share his emotions, it actually, it actually makes him more masculine. Yeah, more of a man, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, I saw that, I, I heard this one thing that the, I, I can't remember where I, I heard it from, but it was saying about something about men who, um, show strength at times and then show they don't have it was something like they don't have to show their strength all the time to to be a man mm -hmm. sometimes it's okay to 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 show your weakness and show that you're human you know what i mean and i, I can't remember the exact quote but it was something like that and i was like wow that, that's kind of profound you know absolutely so, and i and, think a lot of men oh go ahead oh no no i was gonna say i'm sorry um it's just you're right and especially in our culture you know it's it's you know therapy or um, other talking about your feelings or something. Cause I know when I was younger, you know, when my dad was around at times he was around, it was like, boy, be quiet. Like, you mm. know, stop acting like so-and-so, you know? So it was, uh, it, you're, you're definitely right about that. You know, it's looked for us, looked frowned upon, but um, it's a new, it's a new day and age, you know, it's like, it's okay to open up. It's okay. And it's okay to ask for help and to go yes. and seek out the resources. And I think so many people, especially in our culture, because of the way that we were raised, you know, it's, right. you're expected to be this perfect person. And I love that you said, no, I'm human. You know, yeah. like I, I have these difficulties that I struggle with. And really, I just need for you to understand, you know, that I'm not going to be this perfect person that, you know, right. I, I have my difficulties too, but, you know, I'm at a place in my life now where I'm no longer projecting that. Right. I know how to deal with it in, in a healthy way now, you know, because mm -hmm. I think before, like you said, when you were hurting other people, um, it was because of projection. It was because you were bottling up yeah. emotions, you know, For and sure. not releasing them, you know, and and I think that's very important, even if you start with, because I think what you do, um, the music and, and the working out, it's kind of like creative therapy. Right, right. So, you know, definitely get a therapist if you feel like you can't, 
do it on your own. Get some kind of support system, but also use the talents, the innate talents and gifts that you have within yourself and start pouring that into, just like you said, whether it's writing or music, it it doesn't have to be one particular thing. If it is working on model cars or old fashioned, whatever it is that, that lights a spark, I think, in your soul, then start doing that because that is a way to pour, to pour that creativity and and um and any struggles that you're going through into that versus projecting it outwardly onto other people right and and i would say to that as well as like for me i i learned that i'm a very i feel like my my god-given gift is self-expression mm. and i know for me when i don't express myself it's it, it can turn ugly you know so i have to express myself so for the men out there, it's like, look at your temperament, look at your personality, like who you are inside and, and see what works for you. You know, for me, I started to, I know I need to be more uh, consistent with it, but I started to do my videos um, probably back in 2018 or 19, but I just would do them on Facebook, not YouTube as much, but it was like, I needed somebody to talk to. And I just started talking to the camera. You know, then I was like, maybe I should post this and see what happens and help people, you know, but at first it was just like me just kind of like a a video diary, I guess, Mm -hmm. you know, so, um, but yeah, I would say to the men, just find something that, that would release you from your, your mental barriers or your, your kind of, you know, in, in, inward, you know, so. And, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be ashamed of, right? Because I think so many men, men are ashamed yeah they feel shame when especially if they've been diagnosed you know right yeah even if they haven't right because Mm -hmm. a lot of men who struggle with depression and haven't been diagnosed or struggle with anxiety or whatever it is that they may be or maybe even thought that they're not you know like where's this coming from or anything like that that to not be ashamed of that and to want to to really look within and to figure out like you said your personality, your temperance, you know, like noticing the things that agitate you, that yeah. send you off the deep end. Right. Like, I think it's very important for you to really get in touch with who you are as a person, yes. as an individual, in order to know, okay, and, and you don't have to be ashamed about going to get a diagnosis. At least right. you know, yeah. right? Exactly. It's better to know. Yeah. yeah. And then that way you can, you can. You know, just like Joy's doing for you, you can go and research mm-hmm. for yourself. You may right. not have that other, you may not have that support system at in the beginning, but right. I think it's right. very important for you to go and research it for yourself, to learn about it for yourself um, so that you can make better decisions. Do you agree with that or do? I definitely agree with that because that's one thing, and for me, I'm just a curious person, but that's one thing that helped me mm-hmm. when I was going through, when I didn't have anybody, like I was, I was living with my mom at, um, I came home from school in 2014, I was 26. So from 26 to 31, I was staying with my mom. And a lot of times when I was going through my dark times, just in that room, um, everybody would like leave to go to work and I would stay at the house and I had nothing to do. Nobody to talk to, nothing like a community or anything to go to. So I just started reading about my diagnosis, you know, mm-hmm. and that's what really helped me understand it better. I'm still learning more and more each day. But uh yeah, learning, you know, what learning about your feelings, like what am I feeling at this moment? Okay, let me let me let me Google it because you can Google almost anything, you know. <laughs> so it's like, what what am I feeling? What am I feeling at this point? Why am I feeling like this? Okay, let me Google it. Let me understand. Let me watch some YouTube videos and understand, you know, because um I feel like everybody everything is connected to something. So it's like somebody's gonna be going through something that you've been through always you know so it's always always good to educate yourself yes and i think that that is the key is education like i think a lot of men expect you just to understand them and then like if you don't tell me like i you know yes i'm intuitive as a woman but i also still need to know what it Mm. what are your struggles and for you not to be ashamed of that right yeah got it you got to you got to be vulnerable so to any of the men who struggle with vulnerability and 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 
and, and searching out their feelings and releasing those emotions, what advice would you give them? I would give them the most important advice. And I think life lesson of all is to love yourself and try to understand yourself, you know, because that was very hard and, and at times still hard trying for myself is understanding who is Fonda White, you know, who is Joe Smith, who is, you know, whoever. Understanding yourself at the core of who you are is the first step to any, in my opinion, success period, wow. you know, because if you go out in the world and you're getting bombarded with all these things and all these thoughts and people's opinions and things like that, it's like, but you don't have a, a, a core system to stand on. It's, it's very hard to get swayed by, you know, things. So I would say, you know, open up to yourself. You know, I'm, I, I actually made a video about that the other day about being honest with yourself first, you know, being honest with yourself first about your feelings, about uh, what you're actually going through, you know, because that's the only way you're going to heal. So understanding yourself at, at the core. Right. Oh, that is so good. Because I think, I really do think that because a lot of men experience, um, you know, shutting down that feminine energy within them, because that's the feminine, the, the, the emotional, the, the nurturing, the, um, you know, the one who does all the crying and, and the vulnerable. Right, right. That is the feminine energy. And so many of them were, you know, were shunned. It was, it yeah. was stop crying. You know, yeah. you, you got to be able to get that out. And so a lot of men still experience, you know, maybe fear around yeah. them because they were uh, abused or um, spoken negatively over when they when they were having a bad day or right. you know, having these. Um, I don't like to call them negative emotions, but right. you know, having these emotions and they're not able to tap into that or release them. You know, so I, yeah. I do think that it's very important for them to really go and, and tackle those emotions and figure out, like you said, where is this coming from? Like, mm -hmm. where are these emotions coming from? Where are these feelings coming from? You got to really get to know yourself first before you venture out and getting to know somebody else and trusting someone yeah. else. Because like you said, you got to get honest with yourself. You got to be able to trust your own feelings, your own emotions you know, so that you're not projecting that stuff outwardly, so. Yeah, and and I know, um, I, I should even share this with you, is like, for me growing up, I grew up in a dysfunctional family household, and I was like sexually abused, I was physically abused, verbally, you know, just fighting guns to the head, knives pointed, just a whole bunch of mess. But it's, and I know, especially for, for, for Black men, it's hard to, you know, uh, cope with that all that so the way I coped back then was through when I, I started doing drugs at nine wow you know what I mean and so it was like all the things I was like parents yelling fighting and stuff I would just take my oh I started with my inhaler my asthma inhaler and I would just puff it a lot and you get a buzz or whatever then it went from pills to drinking the other things and I just when I saw myself like um you know I, I think I've mentioned before like trying to in my life four times in my life you know so when i when i got to a point where i needed to take make a change because that's that's the biggest thing is like you know that old saying when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired you know i was sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired <laughs> you know <laughs> so it was it's to the when you get to that point to to let yourself like just go like okay like i, I went through all this stuff i don't know what i'm doing or how to handle it but it gets to a point where you're, you're going to get to a point where you're going to get tired of, of living the same routine kind of life and you got to change things up, you know, and uh, as, as men, you know, we'll, we'll find a way, you know, we'll find a way to, to, to change things up. But like I said, you know, self-love, being vulnerable and, and finding something that you actually love to do that's going to keep your mind on the prize, you know, so. Absolutely. Most definitely. So, um, before we go, I want you to um, just speak about the importance of self-care with, with the mental barrier and, um, you know, give some, just some tips on, on how they can get started, uh, how they can start implementing that into their lives um, right. if they are at that point, even if they're not at that point, you know, like what can they start doing today? to care for themselves 
to love themselves so that they can get into that space of, um, of really finding who they are and the core of who they are. Right. Yeah. Um, I would say if, if you're starting your day out or, or you're, you're going through your day is for me, like it was about like, i be honest with you, like just taking a shower, mm. you know, just like self-care, taking a shower, going for a walk. Mm. You know, it was those little things that, that helped me get to the bigger things and my bigger vision. But just start out small. You know, you don't have to have this major thing you know, going on. If you, if you love to re read a book, you know, uh, I used to do this thing where I would just go out and, and go to Walmart, you know, just, I wouldn't buy nothing, you know, didn't have no money, but you know, I would just go <laughs> walk around, you know, just walk around and just get out, get the, the vitamin D on you, get the sun, you know, and if you do want to stay inside, find an activity, find something to do that kind of soothes your, your, your mental barriers and whatnot. And, um, and if, and if you're not going through something you're just trying to find your your who you are you know i would say that um you know just keep keep researching about yourself you know ask the questions ask the right questions you know who am i you know what am i about where, where do i want to go uh what am i trying to accomplish things like that you know just keep keep going i always tell people just keep going you know yeah, right yeah and you inspire so much hope in in men especially in black men you know because um, I think a lot of men can see themselves in you. It might right. not be the same, you know, barrier, but, you know, other men can see them themselves within you and, and know that, you know, hey, if this if this big, this big athletic guy can can do it and, be, and admit it, then I can too. And so right. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. And let us know what, if you got anything going on. Um, how can how can people reach out to you? If they need that support system, if they they want to join Rise to Strive, or if they want to learn more about your Mind Me project, let us know how you can, how we can how they can get in contact with you. Yeah, um, well, I, you know, I have my YouTube channel, which I'm I'm probably gonna change the name, but everything right now is gonna be the Mind Me project, M I N D Me project, and uh, but you can find me on especially on Facebook, just find a white. Um, reach out to me, message me, you know, on Instagram is, I just changed it to, to Miami project, but you can uh, find me on there and, you know, DM me or whatnot, or even on YouTube, reach out, watch a couple of my videos or whatnot. Um, I, like I said, you know, be, being an aspiring entrepreneur now and, and trying to do all these different things, I'm really trying to hone in on focusing on one, but um, which is probably going to be the Miami project, but anywhere on those platforms, you can reach me and talk to me, open up. You know, I'm, I'm willing to open up with you. <laughs> awesome. And I definitely will put all that information in to the description box on YouTube. Um, we'll make a blast a little. I don't know if you saw the one that I did with Belinda, but I'll do a little. Um, okay, I'll watch it. When the, um, when the podcast premieres and when the YouTube video, um, I do like a little one minute clip. To, oh, okay. To show people that um, where they can go. Um, but I thank you. I thank you for yeah. being here. I thank you for your transparency. I thank you for being vulnerable and showing men that it is okay to not be okay. Nobody's expecting you to be perfect. Just expecting right. you to be honest. But again, like you said before, you cannot be honest with anybody else until you are honest with yourself. And that's what it's about being right. honest with yourself first, right? Before you are honest with anybody else. Most definitely. Yep, yep, yep. I appreciate you. Thank you so very much uh, for joining me today. No problem. Thank you.